Right. Now, what you guys just told me, pressure, pressure is force over area. Listen, too much talking. So pressure pressure is force over area. <clears throat> what we'll use, what you guys are using used to using is pounds per inch squared. We're not going to use that in here. We could. When we look look at the lab quest, we actually could do an experiment that says pounds per square inch. The only trouble with pounds per square inch um, that we use, it's, it's got to be in a way kind of related to uh, the international system of measurement. We want to get you guys used to using that. You will use this in times of, like if you're in, your, you're in industrial tech classes, you're probably not going to use things newtons per meter squared. You're probably going to use English units because that's what... Uh, Manufacturing and that, that's what they're going to look at is measuring pressure. Okay, pressure in a line, uh, liquid, you know, pressure, and that, that's probably what you're going to look at. But what we're going to look at is the units would be uh, the pressure units that we're going to use, and I'm going to go ahead and put PA, is Newton's over meter squared is this thing called a Pascal. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that. Pascal of pressure is Newton per meter squared. And the reason why they call it a Pascal is because it's named after an Italian physicist that did, looked at different ways in which to measure pressure and kind of experimented in those areas, and that's where the, the unit comes from, the Pascal. A short version of that is PA. So PA is a Pascal. Now, why do we say a Pascal when we're measuring pressure? Now, it's not a very, very big. A meter squared is one Newton, so it's like one-tenth one -tenth of a pound. So a tenth of a pound over a meter squared. So like over a meter squared, that's how much force is applied over a meter squared is a tenth of a pound. That's not very much. Okay? Maybe a little lighter than, a, maybe around a feather weight over an area. That might be about what that is. So it's very, very minimal. So what we, what we talk about instead is we talk about Pascal's as being a much bigger value, and so we convert it to kilopascals. So that's what we're going to look at, okay, instead. So I'm going to give you three numbers here, and these three numbers represent three different pressures that we're going to use in conversions, okay? So these are the three, I'm going to box them in. So this is three, three um, measurements of pressure. And they're all going to equal the same pressure. So the first is in kilopascals, 101.3 kPa. That represents kilopascals. That means a thousand of these pascals is a kilopascal because a pascal is really tiny. So inside this room, inside this room right now, air pressure, we have a little bit less than a hundred kilopascals. We probably have around 97, 98 kilopascals of pressure in this room. So what creates pressure in this room? Yeah, it's a force, but what creates the force? What's creating the force on pressure against my body? Right now. What's that? Not gravity. So, we got air molecules. 
They are going in all directions and they're hitting. Your eardrum will expand and contract if you go higher and lower elevation. So it's the air pressure in this room that's causing the pressure against my body right now. And so if I would if I stand here and then go all the way up to where there's no more atmosphere, that's all that weight of those molecules are on me, and that's what creates the pressure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Call them all the way up to where there's no more molecules. All those molecules above me weight down as pressure. How deep in water do you think you need to go to equal the, this pressure in water? Not, Not very far. Because water's a lot more. Right, about 10 meters. You go down about 10 meters in water, you add on one atmosphere of pressure. So it'd be, it'd be actually 202. Okay? If you go down 20, you got three, three times the pressure, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this represents a barometer reading. That would be 760 millimeters in height of mercury. Alright, so we can, we can take a barometer. Okay, so this is measured with a barometer. And the barometer that we hear on the weather, like if I get on my phone right now, I'm not supposed to. But, okay? If, if, you guys go ahead and get on your phone. Do you guys have a Do you guys have a weather yes. app that you look at? Yes. Does it give you pressure? Yes. Okay. So you guys you guys tell me the pressure in inches of mercury cuz that's what they're going to give it to you. Probably going to be around 20 Oh, it is 30. What is it? So 30.35 inches of mercury. Okay? So 30.35 inches of mercury. Let's just take a look at that. Let's do a conversion. 30.35 inches of mercury. Okay? For every inch of mercury, we have so many millimeters. So for every one inch of mercury, we have 25.4 millimeters of mercury. Okay? So if we calculated the barometric pressure in millimeters of mercury, we should come up close to that 760. Now, it won't be 760 because we are at a higher elevation. Plus, uh, weather changes the pressure. 770. So, it says the pressure in here, 7, 7 well, whatever that app she gave me, is 70, 770 millimeters of mercury, so it's showing a little bit higher pressure than the 760. Okay? Now, does it say what town that is? Does anybody have a different? Mine was 30.2. 30.28? Yeah, mine was beautiful. I have Santa Clara. <laughs> That's not what we want. 30.28 times 25.4 is 772. It's not much different. Barney's about 30.39. Okay. Now, hey, so this, that, they have what's called a digital barometer, okay, that varies. This is the old-fashioned barometer right here. This has, a, this has mercury in it. This is the height, okay? That's the height, that the mercury that's being supported in there, and that height moves up and down. And that height is going to be right around... The 760. 
Actually, that reads lower pressure than your phone is. That one's reading a pressure that's like 730, 735 is what that's reading. Okay? But if this number goes up, the pressure, the height goes up, right? If this goes down, the height goes down. So atmospheric pressure varies because you got cold weather and warm weather, and you got highs and low pressures in weather um, that you're dealing with, okay? That's going to equal a unit I like to use and you'll like to use because it's easy to use and it's one atmosphere. Okay? One ATM. Okay? These are all pressures that we're going to use. Okay? And what's all similar about all these pressures, these are pressures at sea level. Okay? So does sea level have more air molecules above it than we have here? So at elevation, you guys know what sea level is. Elevation is what? Zero. Zero. Okay? It's where you start your elevation. Okay, so there's more air molecules above sea level than there are here. And if you go up to Denver, Colorado, which is a mile high, then there's one mile of atmosphere that's been eliminated. Now you've got one mile of atmosphere that's not on top of you versus sea level. So the pressure will go down. Okay, and this is how a barometer works. What they do, in fact, when I set up a barometer, this is a long time ago, this is what I had to do. I had to fill a glass tube, thin column, a glass tubing, with mercury. They had a special instrument you could do, you could use because you had to replace the air in there. So if you guys remember the experiment where you pushed the water down below, or pushed the, the glass that was full of air below the surface and no water went in it, right? Mm -hmm. It's not till you tipped it to where air could come out that water could go in. Because the air pressure inside that, that glass was greater than the pressure of the water pushing up. So well, when you push it down, you had to push it to the, tilt it to the side so you could let air out so water could go in and replace it. Or else you couldn't, you couldn't replace it. Okay? So then, we have this mercury bath, HG mercury bath. And we take this tube that's all the way full of mercury and we flip it upside down in here. And we're going to scale this down. So this is not 760 millimeters, but let's say that this point here reads 760 or 76 centimeters, which would be 760 millimeters, okay? So then when you turn it upside down, what happened at sea level, it would go down to 760, but then it would stop there. What's up here? Air. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. There's no molecules up there. Sort of. So I wouldn't draw any molecules there because that would be just empty space. So it's a vacuum. A black hole. No, it's not a black hole. It's a vacuum. Okay? So, if I got arrows pushing down, which represent pressure, and let's say it's 760, and let's say there's a high pressure that comes in, and now these arrows are longer, what happens to the height of the mercury? It goes up, right? Okay? What if these, we have a low pressure come in? So then this mercury in there will drop. Whoa. Okay. And break the glass. That would not be a cast glass. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Questions? All right, good. All right, I got a demo to show you. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, it's not that. Ex well, you guys, might, you guys might like it. A lot of sense. So we have this equation that deals with pressure, and it says force equals 
or sorry, pressure equals force over area. We have just increased the area by 50 times. So, force over area. Okay? So, what happens to P? What happens to the size of pressure? It increases. What? Decrease. It decreases. You said increase. Listen, so this is how snowshoes work. If you're going to go over drifts like we had a week ago, oh. and you're wanting to walk on snow in the country without falling deep inside each drift, you wear snowshoes, and this is what creates the low pressure, and you don't go through. Thumbtack, on the other hand, works different. Thumbtack. One side is wide area, one side is a short area. So, what if we do a thumbtack? We got force, and now the area is really tiny on the. What happens to the pressure? Okay? So, Chase puts his hand out. I'm going to go ahead and push down. Okay, oh, I'm pushing with this end. I didn't think you'd actually do it. That end. Now I'm going to do the other end. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wow. So if I do the other end and apply the same amount, what's going to happen? It's going to go right through his boom. It's going to go down his bone. Here, okay. Wait, I go through the bones. Alright? Anyone go through the bones? Give it a little sharpen, sharpen. Sharpen, sharpen. Well, now, people are like getting tattoos on their eyeballs. That's basically yeah, what that is. Um, those are just crackheads. Okay. Or people from the future. So, those are scary too. you don't have to draw this out, but this is how pressure works. So, I've got this molecule here, and it's going to hit against the side with a what? Force over a area to create pressure. The more of these I hit, what happens to the pressure? It goes up. If I double these, the pressure doubles. Okay? If, if they're moving faster, what happens to the pressure? Because the force is greater, right? Okay, if they go slower, they hit the side, the pressure is smaller. Okay? But that's what creates pressure. If they're not moving whatsoever, and they don't hit the side of the container, what's the pressure? Zero. Okay? There's no pressure. Questions you guys have? Okay. All right. So you guys know a little bit more about pressure. Okay, good. Now we can learn about Laplace. <laughs> I got it. I got it.